What's up, everybody? Happy Sunday morning. Welcome to State of the Union Podcast. I uh, hope you're ready to join us this morning. We have a special interview with Thug Angel 12. We're going to explain who that is. I see he just joined in the chat. So as soon as he hits the request button, and then we will go live. Let's see here if I remember how to accept on uh, right now. So just waiting for the connection. Hey, good morning. How are morning, you? Good morning, good morning. So I'm going to give it a couple of seconds because then it's going to tell people that we're going live. Hopefully we'll get some people coming in. But if not, a lot of people always watch the replay too. So. Oh, yeah. Top of the morning, top of the morning. Yeah. You actually have to work today too? Every day. Every day's a work day for me. Oh. I like to work every day. Yep. I'm like Sonic the Hedgehog. Got to keep working. Right. Oh, we got a few people joining. Let me just hit the wave button there. We got Phoenix. Is that one of your followers? Phoenix Mella? I'm not sure if you know that person. but Hello, maybe How you doing, Phoenix? Happy Sunday. Yeah. So I was thinking this morning, it's crazy that, like, now I'm in the same state with you, Jersey. I feel like I haven't seen you in, like, two years. I feel like it's been a long time. Probably not that long. I think I saw you, what, last year, right? Yeah. So, a lot of people are joining now. But I know one place I definitely have seen you a lot recently is I've seen you a lot online. You've been, like, trending all over the place. But what I wanted to do is before we tell people why you're trending right now, we know this is not the first time you've been online. You've been in blogs a lot. You've been in media a lot. You had a lot of interviews. So why don't we tell people first, not this time, but what was a reason that you went viral years ago so they know the history? Which one? Which one? What was you it? Know, um, the one that I was happy about, the TMZ. What was that one? Oh, the one that you and your boy Hercules got me hooked up <laughs> in? The White Clef Jean. That shit was crazy. And Troy Ave. Yep. Yeah, April okay. showers. Troy Ave, right. So you were in a video with Wyclef and Troy Ave years ago. You portrayed Pac, of course, as you do. Well, your boy hurt, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so the blogs picked it up because right away they thought the real Tupac was in the video. So that was crazy. Yeah. So we had to prove to people that you weren't the real Tupac, which we've had to prove that a few times before. And TMZ interviewed you and all the blogs interviewed you. So what was it like back then, you know, going viral? Again, it wasn't your first time, but how does how does that feel when people always, you know, promote At first, it felt, it felt sir, it, well, nothing, nothing impacts the, the time when I met Afeni, you know, may she rest in peace. But when I met Tupac's mother, that that was like a, the first time. But when, when I got to do that and all the news, you know, it's just like mind blowing, surreal, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So, like I said, recently it happened again. And we know actually before that, even years ago, French Montana posted you. Like, you always get a lot of attention. But recently, the night of the Oscars, something happened where you got more attention. So, why don't we tell people what happened the night of the Oscars? Well, yeah, I've been working on a film for uh, a guy named Rick Boss that I uh, met last year. And um, he reached out to me and told me about a film that he wanted to do. At the same time, I was doing a music video with Spice One and Suge Knight's son. Wow. Um, Suge Jr. Out in Cali? Yeah. So, but it was a different uh, It was a different rap. She was, it, it was a guy named Cam Shah and Mirage who put it together. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's a Pakistani rapper. And, um, you know, he just he had everything going good. And uh, everything was, like, aligning last year in the summer. But a lot of people thought I was on vacation. But I kept telling people, no, it's work, it's work. They were like, no, nah, you're on vacation. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but it's work. And then next thing you know, um, you know, like Rick Boss, uh, he put me in his film. The film depicts Tupac Shakur. And, but he doesn't die in this movie. You know what I'm saying? It's, he got like a different story. And that's what I like about it because it's something different, something fresh. Yeah. And it's, it, it's got a new take on it. Uh, I just, and after just watching, um, that that movie that won Oscars, the uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. After watching that, you know they they mix a lot of fiction, a lot of uh, uh, facts with fiction. If you saw the movie, if you did, it was an awesome film. And I, you know, I was watching that, and I was like, wait a minute, this is basically the same thing he's doing. 
it's like, you know what I'm saying, a what if kind of story, but yeah, seriously, it's like, it's right. something different, you know? And I remember when I was a kid, I used to remember, I used to love those books in school. I don't know if anyone here read those books where it said you could choose your own ending, right? So they'd be yeah. like, oh, turn to page 25 to get this ending. Turn to page, you know, 50 to get this ending. So it's cool to, you know, have a piece of conversation, have a piece of art. And I know it's creating a lot of buzz right now. And, and one thing, though, that I realize is that you know, it's 25, it's almost 25 years later, right? It's not like, you know, the Kobe Bryant situation, you know, rest in peace to him, that's like a few months later, someone's trying to do something. Yeah, that would be mad disrespectful. But 25 years later, to have a conversation, to make a piece of art, you know, I'm, I'm, I support it. Um, so one thing, though, that I wanted to let people know, too, the reason why you do a lot of this, you know, because you've been in a lot of roles, you've had a lot of bookings. A lot of people think, oh, maybe he's trying to get rich, maybe he's trying to get money. But why don't you tell people the reason why you do a lot of this, you know, acting as Tupac? Well, again, it's for me, you know, it's it's a way of life for me. Uh you know, somebody asked me, damn, do you wear your bandana a lot everywhere you go? I said, yeah, I do. If, if, if I'm not at school teaching with my students, if if I'm not at work where I can't use it, where if someone's paying me, then I'm going to walk around wherever the fuck way I want. And me and Tupac got the same birthday. So Gemini. Wow, that's crazy. Wait, we got to rewind that. So June 16th. 1971. Gemini. That's your Gemini 1971, Gemini. Tupac was born. 1975, I was born. So I'm four years I younger. I not think that at all. I mean, that's just, that's just how I it happened. Never, I never had no altercation. I don't right. need no, no fucking plastic makeup. Surgery. Right. Right. And, and that's the reason why Rick Boss chose me for this project. But more overall, I feel like I have the same heart as Tupac. You know what I'm saying? So uh, when I say heart, meaning for the people, meaning I love people. I have heart. I have love for the people. I don't give a fuck what culture you're from. I love and respect you. I don't give a fuck what religion you serve, what God you serve. I respect you. You're a human being. Right. So, I, you know, I was raised that way, you know what I'm saying, to be universal. So um, Now, you mentioned students. A lot of people right here might not even know what you mean about students. What, why don't you explain? How do you have students? What's that about? Well, I'm, I'm a substitute teacher, like I said, in, um, in the MTV, um, um, that show, you know, um, Right with Andrew's job, you know this job. You know this job doesn't suck. Right. Jobs that don't suck. And um, being a school teacher, being a substitute teacher, it allows me to interact with children on all levels. You know what I'm saying? So I now, see them when, assuming, it's when you're in a classroom. Most of these kids would have, before they met you, had no clue who Tupac is, right? So yeah, how do you help to keep his legacy alive? Well, I wear a suit. I, I, I think it's their parents, and it's because I work in the inner city, and I believe Tupac's spirit is still alive. I believe Tupac's memory and um, his aura is always around the, the word of hip-hop. You can't, you can't speak Pac, Tupac without hip-hop. Like Afini said, my son is hip-hop. So if you say hip-hop, automatically Tupac, Biggie Smalls pops right up, you know? So the kid... They see me in, a, in sitting in the classroom in a suit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not some dingy working, walking, dingy guy walking around in the school. No, I wear a suit mm -hmm. to, to to show respect to my students and to basically curb that Tupac look. Cause I don't wear a bandana in class, but the students they still recognize it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they, they automatically they're like, "Yo, you look like that dude on my father's wall." You know That's what I'm awesome. saying? What's up, Jonathan? That's great. So that's another thing. Like like we said with this movie. You know, it's a piece of art, and it's another way to keep his legacy alive. And some people might say, well, we don't need to keep his legacy. But like you just mentioned, there's young kids coming up. It reminds me even of, like, A Boogie, right? You know, he's not a new artist, but fairly new compared to our day. He just did a sample the other day of All Eyes on Me. So it's like you got to keep that conversation going years and years later so people know how great, you know, Pac is. Because when you think of artists from, like, the 20s, the 40s, the 50s, you know, someone like a Louis Armstrong. These kids out here don't know who he is. So what you do to be able to help keep his legacy alive, you know, in your role, I think that that's great and it's something to definitely support. And as an actor, you know, you've done a lot of different type of films. Um, you've done independent, and we know this is independent as well. And 
we've seen Oscar like independent films have won Oscars. So I think people definitely can't sleep on the term independent. You know. Do I truly believe that uh, Rick Boss's movie is gonna be a, a sleeper, meaning it's gonna it's gonna hit numbers because the type of movie that he's going for isn't just about Tupac. You know what I'm saying? It's about a movement. Like he said uh, in his interview, it's about the Black Panther. It's about the history of the Black Panther Party. And it doesn't just go on one side of the family. You know what I'm saying? This goes on both sides of the family, meaning yeah. Tupac biological and both parents, you understand, and step parents. So this movie is going to like basically have people thinking, have people talking. And that's all we really want to do. Like you said, we don't want people to forget about Pac's, um, you know, his his contribution and what he did to for hip hop community. Now, speaking on culture issues, the, all the topics that he rapped about and talked about, he was an activist as well as a rapper. You understand? So this is all, also about activism and you know, just people that help one another. And it's not all about, you know, saying what we think, you know what I'm saying? It's it's basically giving you a twist of the story. And I'm thinking that this movie is going to have people like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Right. What if, what, what if, you know? Hey, it'll be good for tourism for New Mexico, if you ask yeah. me, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. So it's going to go um, up for them. In filming the movie, um, you know, I know I'm not giving anything away because what I'm about to say is on the cover of the of the project there's a very special street that is shown on that cover. What was it like for you to film on that street? And why don't you tell people what I'm talking about? Oh, where the Pac, where, where Tupac had, you know, had passed away, his final moments on Culver. And, you know, some people say um, it didn't stop there. You know what I'm saying? But for me to take pictures on Culver, for me to film on Culver, it was something, you know, like surreal. Again, surreal, but I did two projects for two different uh, people. For Cam Shaw, the rapper, he, him and Mirage, they put that that project together with Spice One and Sugar, awesome. And then I did um, the same thing with Rick Boss. Um, but when we go back to film again, hopefully we're gonna have you know the Las Vegas Police Department helping us out and also the people at UMC because um, this is gonna be something big. Yep. Now you mentioned family earlier. I know, because I know you personally, that you had a very special moment with Afini Shakur. If people go to your Instagram page, they'll see a picture you recently posted. Why don't you tell everybody what that moment was like and what that conversation was about? Well, speaking about Afini Shakur and the and the movie, uh, all right, when I first met Afini, um, she had told her security guards to let me through because at that time I was in a newspaper here for the Jersey Journal in Jersey City. And um, uh, I was trying to give her the, the, the newspaper to let her know that, you know, her name came up and I was trying to get the part for the movie. So she's like, let him through, let him through. She's like, oh, my God. She started crying. I started crying. We started hugging each other. And I told her, I said, I want to play, I want to play your son in the film, if you don't mind. She's like, I would love to see that. But unfortunately, she was like, this film that the movie. Well, wait, just that, to interrupt that, so people know we're not talking about the UMC yeah. film. We're talking about a different one right now. Yeah, yeah. This is 2000. I'm talking about this is in 2010 when I met Afini Shakur and I had spoke to her about the film uh, All Eyes on Me. Yeah. But Which at, at that, that time, I think, was that, Antoine Fuqua was the director, right? Then no, no, yeah. Answer, answer, yeah, yeah, yeah I told her. That's the one we're talking about, that the statement she made to you about that. So go ahead. You can continue with that. Yeah, well, Antoine Fuqua was looking for people, and I had um, sub my, I had submitted my my information, and and then I had met her at that time, and she said to me, "Right now, that movie is not, you know, I have no no say to that movie. These people, they, I'm fighting them in court." And I was like, "What do you mean?" And she was like, "Baby, she was like, you're gonna do a Tupac film." She was like, "But not the first one." She was like, "The first one, I have nothing to say about it." She was like, there's going to be other films. My mm -hmm. son is hip hop. That's when she told me that her son, she said, my son is hip hop. So when they make hip hop movies, more likely you're going to be chosen to play in one of those movies. Or if wow. not, you will be more likely you will be making your own film. She told me, she said, I do see you playing my son. 
And that's when she started crying. Okay. And then I introduced her to my wife. And then yeah. she started crying. She was like, wow. She's like, she's very pretty. I said, my wife's from Egypt. And then she was like, wow, my son wanted to marry someone from Egypt. You know, he wanted an African queen. And, you know, we just started, you know, talking. And then, you know, again, you know, I had to bounce. So. And you can see the joy on her face when you look at that picture, you know. Like, you got the proof, you know, of you guys meeting. Yeah, well, I had bumped into my man, Taekwon Head, and hopefully he'll get that, you know, that that he'll find more pictures because my, my photographer was there at the time. Yep. Um, so I just want to look at my questions here to see what else um, that I wanted to cover. So we know, too, like I said, as an actor, you've had a chance to do a lot of different roles. You've been flown across the country. You know, you get books for all kinds of gigs. You even do public speaking in schools. You know, what are what are some of your favorite bookings that you've had, you know, as an actor? Yeah, I got to say, I got to say all of them, because everywhere I go, people have shown me love. And I want to say thank you, because they hired me through Gig Salad. That's G-I-G-S-A-L-A-D dot com, Gig Salad. And they hired me through there. But um, after this film, you know, after all this, you know, Rick Boss like, hey, you're going to have to start charging more money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I'm not like telling said, really You do things too that sometimes it's like for a donation, you know, speaking to kids. You also help the community a lot. You even did something with the mayor recently of Jersey City. So I'm hoping. I did something with the mayor of Newark not too long ago and Tupac's oh, okay. uncle and, a, and Kristen Parkis. And we had donated a, a, a check in the name of um, sparkthebrain.com with Northside. And, um, Spark the Brain is a nonprofit that helps children with autism. And I have a daughter with autism. You know, so I don't know if, if you can oh, see people, that. For people, you probably can't see. It's a little too blurry. But, yeah, okay, now we can see. That's a tattoo, and that's, like, an autism symbol, right? That tattoo. Yeah, that's an autism ribbon. And then, and then I also push for the TupacShakur.org foundation where um, Setua, Tupac's sister, has set it up for people with mental disabilities. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it, I, I support the family. And speaking with Rick Boss, speaking with Rick Boss, I also want to clarify that once this film is done, if the film should go cinema and the film does get don't you know the the, the proper treatment and money, we're gonna ha we're gonna have to give a cut to the Tupac Shakur family and the estate. And he agrees with me, a hundred percent. You understand? And Rick Boss's heart is in the right direction for this film. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he just wants to get his movie and story across. And once that's, that's done, you know what I'm saying, the world will see you, you know, and let them, let the world decide what they want to believe. You understand? Yeah, so like I was saying, I hope at some point either Jersey City or Newark, because, you know, you know, I think you're originally from Newark, but Jersey City, everyone gives you love. There. I hope at some point when you get even more famous, they give you, like, the key to the city, you know, because you do so much and even just, you know, riding around like so, so many people support you. Even like we mentioned earlier, the police, the police will see you and be like, "Hey, Pac, what's up?" And now again, no disrespect, we're not trying to, you know, anything with the original Pac. There'll never be a replacement. We know that, never, but never. it's just people know the work you do, and like you said, with that good heart, you're always helping people. You know, you're always doing your thing to even you try to help people get jobs. You know, like you have kind well, of. It's funny experience. that it's funny that you say that because one of my students right now works for AEW. He has a one point something million dollar something dollar contract. Okay, he works for AEW. His name is Sonny Kiss. I want to give a shout out to Sonny Kiss. What's AEW? And I'm not familiar. AEW is All Elite Wrestling. It's basically oh. something by the W. It's just like the WWE, but it's run by Cody Rhodes, but a former employee from the WWE. Now the thing is, the the twist about his story is this: I was in his class. I was his teacher. And he always tells me, Mr. Garcia, he was like, because of you, you gave me a lot of inspiration because you told me in class that you could do anything you want in this world. Uh -huh. You could do anything you want. And I was listening to something about Tupac. I was listening to one of his, his tracks just yesterday. And yes. Pac said, you could do whatever you want in this world. You understand? You could take on whatever you want. You just got to put your mind to it. If people tell you no, that you can't do it, fuck up, fuck them. You understand? It's your dream. So you do your dream. And that's what I'm yep. doing. I'm yep. doing my dream and God, God bless me and put these people in my, in my, in my path and gave me the inspiration, gave me the opportunity to do this. And I'm going to give it my hundred. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm doing it for the memory and legacy of Tupac Shakur. Mm -hmm. But looking back at my students 
story, looking at him every week on TNT, on AEW. He's on TV uh -huh. every week. His name is Sonny Kiss. He made it, you understand? And I told him, I said, you made it, you understand? And that's inspiration for me. So we got to inspire one another. Yeah. I look at my children, I give them 100%. You know why? My students and my own children. You know why? Because when we inspire our children to work, when we inspire our children to learn and educate at themselves, okay, when they get older, when they become adults, they are the future generation. What do they do? They give us opportunities. And that's all I want. Mm -hmm. The same opportunity that I give them, I want the same opportunity back. And I pray. I pray a lot. You know what I'm saying? My, I'm a, I'm a God-fearing man. Ain't nobody going to ever take that from me. I'm, I fear no man but God. But mm -hmm. I thank God every day. And I'm so grateful every day on this Sunday. I'm grateful for everything that has passed. And even my family, my grandchildren, everything. I take everything as a gift. And right now, that's a gift. And then what I'm trying to give back to Setua, the family, the fans of Tupac Shakur, Rick Balls, right. I'm going to give them 100%. It's a gift. It's a gift yep. to let you know that your brother, your son, Bill Garland, everybody, Kristen Parkes, anybody and everybody, I love them all. If you're with me, you're with me. If you're against me, I love you. I don't care. I wish the best for you. But I'm going to keep right. doing if it. If anyone chooses not to see, you know, the movie, just like any movie, you know, you don't have to watch it. That's your choice. You know, I'm excited to see it. I think everyone here is excited to see in it. In my past, my past, it's like the past. I don't believe it. Like, where I'm at right now, the past life that I live, the things that I put in my body, the, you know, I, 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 I spent years wasting time with negative people, negative things and now that i'm oh, positive right. actually you know I'm again a lot of people might not even know that we don't have to get into it you know fully but you've overcome you know a lot in your life you've overcome you know some drug addiction i can't i overcome drug addiction you went to college you have a college degree you know yes i'm a high school oh, drop on went back way to embody pox spirit like you know the way against you all the odds way. against all odds and and through the power of god i got through all that through my mother's prayers through my family's prayers and that's what we all got to understand. Everybody got a family. Nobody's born without a family. And if you are born without a family, you're adopted by a family. And God puts people in our, in, in our paths. You understand? When I thought that this movie wasn't going to happen, I asked God, I said, damn, I, I want to leave my mark, God. I want to leave my mark. I want to leave something for the fans of Pac to know that I, I gave my 100%. You understand? When I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and curdle and, and hide my talent. No, I don't want to do that. I want to share my talent, and I, I want to thank everyone. Thank you all for supporting me. The haters, thank you, because you my fuel. You give me more fuel to think about. The people that say the no, the non-believers, thank you. You know why? Because the prayers and the hate feed my fuel. You know what I'm saying? They feed my ambition. And, and, and I said uh, earlier, all the different bookings that you've had, like, I've seen you get booked, and, you know, no offense if this comes off offensive, but I've seen you get booked before by, like, 70-year-old white people, and they'll be jamming to Pox music with you and at weddings and all this stuff. And it's like, to me, that's a beautiful thing because they probably would never have heard Tupac's music. But, like, through, you know, the work you do, like, you know, you help to really create that bond with, like, all kinds of people, you know. So well, see, that's it's, what, it's a beautiful thing. That's what Afeni asked me to do. Afeni asked me, so everything you do, when you do my son's stuff, I know what you do. Just please keep his keep his stuff in the light. She said that. Keep his stuff in the light. You got to keep Tupac's stuff in the light because too many too many people try to look at the bad things that we did. Just like they were trying to look yeah, at the like bad that things. Gail of, King interview. I that, call her that, Gail that, King. Like Kobe yeah. Bryant. They're trying to look at the bad things he did. Well, shit, if you look at all the bad things I did, then you probably wouldn't even want to know who I am. Because I did bad things. We were young. You understand? People go through things. Life is a, life is nothing but experiences and, to, and temptations, uh, goals, failures, successes. That's what life's about. And like I try to tell my students, reading is the fundamental. Because when you read, you basically uh, escape what you're going through in real life. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I try to tell my students, read a lot, because you have to learn how to be literally sp speaking and, and reading information gives you that power. 
You understand? Because and the students, I forgot to mention earlier, one of your other students we know was Trey Budden. Shout out to Joe Budden. Joe Budden's yeah, son. Yeah. He was Shout out to Joe I Budden. Was in college, but I'm a huge yeah. Budden fan. So now I do have one final question for you, and then I want to get some questions if anyone in the chat has any questions. But, you know, as close as you are, you know, to Pac, you're a fan, you love his music. What is what is some of the lyrics or the message that you really, you know, like favor the most from him or, or something that, you know, really like motivates you? I want to say a lot. I want, I can't, it's too many of his, it's too, it's too much. His albums are like his poetry, his music. It's, it's, you know, it's basically like it's guidelines and a lot of people don't see it. He has a song called who do you believe in? You mm -hmm. know, he puts his faith in God. Bless, I'm still breathing. And even though it's hard, that's what I believe in. Before I'm leaving, I'm asking the grieving. Who do you believe in? He's asking you, who do you believe in? Jehovah, do you believe in Allah? Do you believe in God? You know, everybody has a different belief, but we all have a universal love for God. Another song that he has is Only God Can Judge Me. That right there I says a good. lot. Do you understand? Now, yep. the, the the song temptations you know what i'm saying that it, it it talks about the temptations of a man's heart when a woman's around you understand uh so many songs um dear mama's one song that i, I hold and treasure a lot of people ask me to you know keep that song you know in, right. in their little tracks but keep your head up is, is one song that i really like and um you know how do you want it? I like that too, but that's on a different level. Right. But again, <laughs> all his music has variety. You understand? So if you search for it, like I have a coworker, shout out to Lonnie. I have a I have a coworker who basically uh, I put him on to Tupac, and he liked he liked those three songs that I mentioned to you, the first three, and he went crazy. He was like, "Yo, man, I know he raps like that. Though he was all about gangbang." And I'm like, "No, Tupac was not really a gangbanger. He wrote about it." But most of his music is more about everyday life struggles because he is a son of a Black Panther. So he always spoke about things that 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 affect the community. Like unity. And, like, actually, that reminds me that one time you went with my son, who we know is a big activist. I think in Newark you were doing, like, a march. And, you know, so you are on the front line, too. You know, see, I, tell people all, I tell people all the time, people like my son, okay? You guys don't know about my son. He's a rapper from New York. He's the best, and he works for his community, okay? Uh, I met him, okay? I was introduced to my son through Tupac's sister, Setua, mm -hmm. because Setua and Mopreen, Tupac's siblings, his, his brother and sister, what they do is they do things for the community, okay? That's, that's, on, that's on his mother's side. They, they, they do things for the community, you understand? Mm -hmm. They don't, they're not into the entertainment world. They're more into, like, helping community. That's why they created two, uh, the TupacShakur.org for the people with mental health disabilities. Oh, wow. And they also, yeah, they created that. And then working with Kristen Parkes in Northside, they also created, you know, SparkTheBrain.org. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and they came to Newark, and they were working with Nisons, as N-I, Nisons. Yeah. S O N N E. Yep. No, no, no. It's N I. Oh, somebody else. Okay. No, no, no. Nice song. Nice songs place. That that's a place for autistic oh. people in on, in Newark, New right. Jersey. Okay. So they do a lot of community based things. You understand? Now, Tupac's other sister on his other um, on his father's side, Takira Allen. She still writes books. And she does screen. He puts out movies too. She put out a yeah. movie, independent film that I think she's over a million views or something. I think I saw the yep. other day. Shout out to her. Takira, yeah. Shout out to Takira Ireland. Shout out to Bill Garland. I mean, again, is is the family is big. You understand? And what people got to understand is sometimes in life you just got to go and do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. If a film is not going to get made, you have to. Grab it by the horns and pray for it. Make it happen. Get with people who believe in you. And that's what Rick Boss did. He he found me. He said, yo, you want to make this movie? I see you've been dying to make a Tupac movie, and I want to put you in my film. You understand? So I was like, let's do it. You understand? And that's what people don't understand today. You can take hold of your life. You grab a cell phone. You grab a buddy. You get somebody from a college. Link up with positive people you get people right. facebook was started by kids in college you know and yeah you know, 
millionaire. So, and, and like we said earlier, you know, and I like the fact that everything you're doing is positive. You know, there's a lot of you know lookalikes out here, and you know, shout out to Kevon Wright. He's one of our um, I love friends. Well, another popular, love you, like, yeah. but it's like whatever opinion people have, you're not out here trying to get girls. Of course, you have you know your family, you have a wife. You know, you're not out here trying to get you know, just trying to get money, hustle people, you know, scam them. Well, You're out here just doing good things. Well, honestly, you know? I tell Those people this. Kids. I tell people all the time, my, my life as a substitute teacher is all good, but the pay isn't that well, you understand? Then I have a second job, you know what I'm saying, at the supermarket, chopping up the fruit, you know, helping them in the back. I love it and all it keeps me in shape. But mm -hmm. honestly, you know me, I, I'm a worker, you know what I'm saying? I'm a workaholic. So there's no sense of ever me ever trying to get money off of somebody's image or, not, or anybody's death. Nothing like that. Right. I'm an actor. You understand? And again, and independent things are not multi-million dollar things. And and if it was, trust me, we we will be giving money to the estate. Yeah. And it's all for the fans. It's all for the love. I'm not even looking at it on the money part because I'm not right. even thinking about my, I make my own money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So speaking it's of more, fans, I wanted to give a chance. If anyone here has comments, I saw a comment earlier. Someone wants to know when the movie would be coming out. Um, I think it's still in production, right? Yes. To, uh, we're, we're, we're aiming at next year, but we got to make sure because it might be going to a film festival too. Okay. Yep. So mm -hmm. in the chat, before we wrap up, any of you guys have questions for Rich? Um, if you had a chance to meet him, you know, uh, you have a story you want to share or whatever, you know, type it in the chat real quick. And uh, we'll bring it up. But otherwise, you know, definitely check out um, his page. Why don't you tell everyone your, your social media, how they can find you while we're waiting? Yeah, hey guys, I want you guys to understand that my Instagram, I got up to 15,000 people or some, some shit, 7.5, whatever. So it doesn't allow me to follow everybody back, which I could, which I wish I could. And I really hope that if you really want to get in contact with me, you can always drop me a, a DM. But my Instagram is Thug Angel Twelve. My Twitter is Thug Angel Eleven. I could get people on Twitter more. Yeah. I could add them up and in, in on the Twitter. The Instagram's kind of packed, but then my Someone Facebook. Someone here said they wanted to FaceTime with you, so I guess afterwards, just go on his social media so you can find him and you know. Oh no no no! I, no, I, have, I actually have to go. I, have, I actually have to get ready for work. What's oh, up, Jonathan? Okay. That's my boy, Jonathan. I, I hit you up, Jonathan. I hit you up. Oh, there's a quote from the Netherlands, answer him. And he's been following you since 2016. That's awesome. Thank you, man. Um, God bless you, man. Ven uh, vandal vandal vandalism, 720. Yeah, vandalism, yeah. well, vandalism, 720. Yep. Oh, so if you're out there uh, in the Netherlands, why don't you get him books for a show out there? Tell, you, tell your promoters, tell your people, you know, if you want to have a nice pock show or, you know, maybe they can fly him out. So. Yeah, I could probably get my man Camp Shaw and them out there too. Shout yeah. out to Camp Shaw. Shout out to Mirage. Shout out to Rick Boss. All right, I was just about to say that. You know, the man behind the, the project. Someone's the in man England. behind Tupac, the great escape from UMC. England, what's up? Jade, how you doing, Jade? Definitely excited to see it. So if anyone missed it, we will be posting the replay. Um, we'll post it on Facebook. We'll post it everywhere. So. But thank you for, for tuning in. Um, thank you, State of the you Union. Thank you, State thank of the you. Union. I'll give, you the last, I'll give you the last few words. If You, you could either freestyle or you could just say what you want to say. But you no, I, just want to say God, I just want to say God bless everyone. Believe in your dreams and never give up on your dreams. Anything is possible as long as you put your heart and soul and your faith behind it. Do your prayers and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, things should work out for you. Just keep pushing for your dreams. Don't ever stop. Yep. Life is short. You only get one time. One time to get it right. So let's do this. Yeah. Give us the. You know I can't do the West Side. Give us the West Side. Oh, the West Side. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> West Coast. All right. East Coast. Worldwide. Hey, everybody. So. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, y'all.